welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I'm Tony Green. I'll be doing the show today. So before we get started, just a few little notes for everyone. Um, the first note is, I will never reach out to anybody for a session, for a reading, for any type of work whatsoever. If you do want a reading or work or that's it, a reading or work, <laughs> um, you have to reach out to me. The best way to do that is through my website, uh, T-O-N-I-G dot I-N-F-O. I, you know, to be honest, I don't, I didn't pre-plan, pre-speak my thing. So I don't know where I thought I was going with that. Um the second thing is, the second part of this is, um, I lost my notes this morning because, well, because I have like 20 million notes everywhere. I mean, like everywhere. So I am looking for my like, my show notes. I, I think they're here someplace. So we're going to do this. First and foremost, thank thank you everybody so much for watching and listening in, uh, joining in. Throughout the show today, I'll be doing clearings, which are healings, and I will be taking callers. When I call out your area code, please tell me your name and your number. Your, not your number, your name and where you're calling from. Oh my goodness. Um, your name and where you're calling from and have a very specific question available or connection. If you want to connect with somebody on the other side, please tell me their name, their relationship to you and whatever. If you if you have a specific question for them, let me know. Um, and I'll, I'll get, I'll do the best I can. Okay. I will do the best I can for you. Um, second, oh, you know, one of my, one of my, uh, people reached out to me this morning. She found my show and she's been going through past shows. And she said, in one of your shows, you said that in the Philippines, Malaysia, there was going to be natural disaster. And I guess, um, there was, there was an earthquake and I, I, our prayers, our prayers absolutely go out to everybody in that area. Um, so yes, and I could do some, if you guys that are listening or watching want me to do a predictions today, let me know. I could do more predictions. Um, or if I should just get going with callers, that would be good too. Either way, I am good. I am going to let you know there are going to be a lot of changes coming in. And these changes and implementations, and I'm channeling right now. Oh, thank you, Fawn. Fawn said, yes, do predictions. Okay, um, these changes and, and in, these changes that are coming in are going to be implementations. These implementations are going to, um, hmm, they're going to be effective with the new year. That's seemingly far off, but they're strategically doing them as we move forward. Oh, okay. So whatever they're pushing through now is going to change, is, is going to be implemented by the new year. So here's, a, you know, it's, it's really... A, I get I get a lot a lot a lot of of downloads and information and not everybody wants to know the truth not everybody wants to um hear everything I could have to say some people do I have most of the people that listen to or watch my show they compl they're ready for the truth, at least as much as, as they can handle. There's a lot of truths people couldn't handle, like seriously. Um, but most of the people that are in alignment with me, they can handle the truth. And one of the things that is, is really imperative, one of the things that 
that I would say for everybody, no matter what country you're in right now, no, no matter what country you are in right now, I would say if, if there was just one piece of advice that I could give to you, <clears throat> stop listening to the mainstream media and start listening to speeches and go to alternative modes of media. Now, for anybody, and I know people think, I don't, I don't have time to listen to everything they say. Well, then you're just going to be uninformed and you're going to be depending on the what, what they're wanting you to believe. That's your choice. Some people just want to feel safe. They want to feel and believe everything's okay and that they are safe. I get that. I do. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, but there is a thing about being appropriately informed and hearing both sides of everything and, and, um, and doing your own research and fact checking, because I will, if it's one thing I can tell you everything they're doing, they've put it in print. There are patents that are out there that have told us exactly where things are going. So for example, if I told you, and I know it sounds very sci-fi, I know it sounds very sci-fi sci and like, that's not even possible. That's, that's not even freaking possible. And people, okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to say the next thing. If I told you there was a patent and it's searchable, a patent that allows a chip to be installed in you, right? And then whenever you're near a computer, your phone, any 5G thing outside, that, that, computer, phone, 5G thing will be able to control you. I know that sounds so sci-fi, right? Why would they want to do that? So everybody's so afraid. They want to chip us so they can hear everything we're saying and know everything we're doing. Dude, dude, wake up. Dude, seriously, that's your big fear? You post everything on every social media thing. These little things right here, GPS all the way. Our, our, our cars, GPS all the way. They, if they really want to know where we are, what we're doing, they can. If I say good morning to somebody loud enough on the phone, my computer, my iPad, will, my phone will go, good morning. How can I help you today? It's always listening. They don't want to track us. We're, we're out there giving them everything and then some. Seriously, that's what you're afraid of? Because we're putting it out there like, like it's presents on Christmas morning. I mean, come on, like seriously. But if you if you do the homework, if you go and you start looking at what some of these patents are, and if you if you if you really want to know the government, the government is in part having these patents. Now, when they chip chip us, when they try to, they're not going to say, we're chipping you so we can take control of you. Oh, oh. Not at all. <laughs> because then we wouldn't do it, would we? They're going to say they're doing it for our safety. Does that sound familiar? We need to do this for your safety. We're going to do it so that we can access your medical information at any point. So if there's ever a medical emergency, all we have to do is scan you. We're doing it so nobody can ever get into your funds again. All your funds will be kept right here, right here. And all we have to do is scan you. You'll never be, be corrupted again. Your funds will never be corrupted again. Okay. That sounds like a good argument. Right? That sounds logical. 
But do they really care that much about that? The people that let the 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 food be poisoned 100 okay so we're gonna stop i'm stopping spirit we're stopping there <laughs> we're stopping there <laughs> that's it we're done that's our conspiracy theory moment of the day that's it right there and if you don't believe me it's okay i get it i get that you might not believe me do your own research search a patent that allows just search just go search you will be amazed at what you find once you look. And if you find that somebody has that kind of technology and it goes back to certain people or governments, do you think they were just having fun and decided to research that and come up with it for no reason whatsoever? Now, here's my thing. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I'm not trying to put false information out there. But until we are informed, we cannot protect ourselves. And if you do not know what is possible on the other end, how can you protect yourself? How can you decide if this is something you want or not? How can you decide? How can you, how can you make an informed choice? about it. So when when everything started two years ago, it went really fast, right? Everything happened very, very quickly. So we made choices based on very, very fast moving things. And what we thought we were doing was in the best of, of everybody, not only ourselves, but for others. And they used that and they used it very well. This isn't to protect you. It's to protect everybody around you. It's to protect grandma. It's to protect grandpa. Right? And we want to because we're good people. And good people want to protect people. But what if I told you <laughs> the patent for that thing that they gave everybody? came out in 2015. <laughs> what if you knew that? <laughs> How could they come up with a cure in 2015 for something that hit us in 2020? It's not funny. Do your research. Believe a conspiracy theorist. It's take what they say and research it. Look into it and do not go blindly into the night because what's hanging out down dark alleys, never good for you. Okay, let's go to the show. Oh, hopefully the whole show isn't going to be this like this. We're going to go to caller 562. 562, how can I help you today? Um, this is Yvonne. My question is, um, I'm trying to get into this a new apartment called Sparks of Midtown. Do you see me getting into that apartment building? Ooh, um, you know, actually, I think you're going to, you should be looking at other options. I think if you do get in, it's not going to be timely. It's, it, it, I'm just hearing it's not going to be timely. So maybe they won't, you won't be able to get in when you want or how you want. Um, I think you should keep your options open and you should look at other possible places also um, is what I'm hearing for you. Okay, Yvonne? Okay. I'm sorry to say that, but okay. you know what? I think that, and I know that the I know in certain areas, it's very, very difficult right now to find um, other uh, to find places to live. And what I'm hearing is be open to expanding your search. Now, I, if it does help, I do feel like you are going to find something within a month or around a month's time, and you're going to like it more than what you're looking at right now. Okay, sweetie? Okay. Okay, thank you so much. You are so, so welcome. And thank you so much for calling in. I am going to do a healing right now. So for everybody listening, re-listening, 
everybody um, watching, re-watching. We're going to do a healing on, um, let's start with stress. Yeah, after that intro, I think we all need a big old healing on stress. So whoo, I, let's clear. Uh, we, we have let go of all stress. I get a no. We're going to start clearing that. Um, all that's causing the stress has been cleared and healed. I get a no. Let's clear and heal that. And I'm going to go directly to 405. 405, how are you today? How can I help you? Hi, um, I'm Lillian, and I was wanting to connect with my uncle. Okay. Matt. Matt, your uncle Matt. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I hear, it's a song. And it, and they, I often hear this song for loved ones on the other side. And it's I, it's been a long time since I've seen you, my friend. Uh, something, something, something. Do, 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 do. So that that is the first thing I'm hearing. And uh, Lillian, let me ask you, do you have a question or uh, something you would like to c communicate with your uncle specifically? No. Okay. So the first thing your uncle, the reason I said that is because the first thing your uncle is saying is ask her, ask her, ask her. So either he was referring to, I need to ask you if you had something for him, or there's some female in your life that you need to ask a question to. Maybe it's your mom, maybe it's somebody else, but there's somebody that you need to ask something to. So maybe you've been thinking about asking somebody a question or something, but the first thing I hear is ask her, ask her. So that being one of the messages, however that resonates or however that makes sense to you, that's something you're going to have to um, figure out or know later on down the line. The next thing that... He Okay, I hope these messages, if these messages don't make sense right now, they will make sense later on. He's showing me a bunny. I don't know why, but it's an out, it's a bunny that's outside, but I don't know if it's an outside bunny. Oh, okay. Thank you. That is a weird sign for that. Okay, so he's saying on Easter. <laughs> he's saying on Easter, he's going to. On Easter, he's going to bring you um, a sign or a confirmation. He's going to let you know on Easter that he is around you. And he's going to bring something like your. I don't know if on Easter you're going to see a bunny outside and that's supposed to be like your. Then you will. That, that's his confirmation. I do know that what he is saying is. Um, on Easter, there there is going to be you're going to get something, and you're going to know he's around you or he is with you all the time. And um, and I gosh, I hope that helps. It doesn't seem like it was much, but I think as time unfolds, it will mean more. Does that make sense to you, love? They might. My aunt was asking. Yeah, my aunt, um, Shelly, she was asking if he was okay. He is. He is. For him to be able to come through and bring those messages, absolutely he's okay. And then um, Aunt Shelly, the one thing he's saying is, oopsie folks, sorry about that. The one thing he's saying is um, the pain, the pain is gone, the pain is gone, the pain is gone. Um, and not... If there was physical pain, but also emotional and psychological pain, it's it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's over, it's over, it's over. Um, he's letting you know he is um, in a better in a better place, and in he's also saying it in the way in, he's in a better way. So that hopefully, I I really hope that that makes sense for you. I really hope that that is something that is, um, that, that is helpful for you. It is. Thank you. You are so welcome. And thank you so much for calling in. Um, and I'm really grateful. I was able to take your call today. Very, very grateful. I was able to take your call today. 
Um, I'm going to go directly to the next caller, who is 775. 775, how can I help you today? Hi, Tony. My name is Wendy from California, and I am seeking remote work. Um, I hope that I'm hired by a place like Nordstrom's or Bloomingdale's to be on the phone and to be the lady that you reach when you call that company and solve customer service issues. Uh, will I be working very soon and will I be able to keep the job at least for a few years? I don't know about keeping the job for a few years, but I am hearing that you will get hired. I hope that was helpful, love. Um, thank you so much for calling in. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go directly to 262. 262, how are you today? Hi, Tony. I'm doing fine. Is this Amy? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Is this Hi. Amy? Yep. <laughs> hey. Yep. How how, Amy Milwaukee. Uh, Amy Mil Milwaukee. How are you, Amy? Doing well. Excellent. Excellent. How can I help you? How can I help you? Uh, I have so many questions, so I'm trying to pull <laughs> the one out. Um, I guess the, the burning question is, last time we talked, you said that they're saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Can they give me more information? Okay, uh, I think they were saying get ready because somebody's coming in. Somebody's coming in and I hear in like Flynn, I'm hearing this person's coming. You know, I'm going to say that as much as I would like to say this, but I hear May, June. So I feel like this person might be coming in. I don't know if they're going to come in sooner than that, but May, June. I do feel like, Amy, I feel like you might have a couple different perspectives prospects. And I do feel like you have to be use your discernment and be very, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, be very um, uh, ch choosy, choosy about it. Um, go with what? Okay. I, I'm gonna say this and 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 then I'm gonna try to exp explain it a bit. Go with what does not feel normal. Now, it, let me explain that. Typically, we end up with someone and this person um, is someone who feels a little bit comfortable in some way to us. And it's they're comfortable and we end up like kind of repeating a pattern from the past. But if we really look at um, all of the, uh, um, what this person is bringing and we really dissect it, we will not end up repeating a cycle from the past. Okay. So here's a better way to say this. And I say this all the time. Don't go into this with your feely, feely, oh, First, like, oh my gosh, this guy, there's somebody new. Will he like me? Will he want me? Go into it from a, not that you do that, just like an, in general, like trying to be funny, whatever statement. Um, go into yeah. it as though it's a business partnership. And I'm going to tell you, I cannot be more clear and, and, and strong about this. It, from a woman, sometimes fr from the woman's point of view, we tend to go into relationships in a much different way than men do. Men are a little bit more strategic than women when it comes to relationships. Sometimes, not all of you, but but sometimes that's the case. Women go in and they're trying to, you know, find that person. And that's a normal, natural thing. That's what we are geared and, and programmed and DNA'd to do. There's nothing wrong with that. That's our natural state. It's our job as women, generationally and DNA-wise, to find a partner and then start nesting with and for that partner. What I'm going to say is don't what was the word you said? Nesting. Like find a partner and then start what? Nesting. 
nesting, nesting, building a home, building a home, build a, build a nest, build, build, <laughs> okay. like building a home. Like yes. we're trying to build a home. We're trying to create a foundation with this person. Now, what I'm going to say is, yes, that is good. But, but we need to stop looking at it like this person showed up with me, so I'm going to run with it. And I know that once you hit a certain age and a lot of, a lot of women especially feel this way. Once we hit a certain point, they're just, you know, when we were 18, you know, there were just a lot of potential partners. Once you hit 30, there aren't as many. Once you hit 40, there aren't as many. Um, and quality partners, they're just male and female. There just might not be as many good quality partners. Seemingly, we don't need a lot of choices because we're only going to hopefully settle down with one. Now, I am going to say when you when you meet someone, start talking to them and looking at them as, listen, you're coming in my life to do a job. Are you qualified to do this job? And women have gotten it twisted. We don't know our role anymore. We don't know the role we are supposed to play in a relationship. And a lot of times men don't either because so many, let me, let me back up to the role we're supposed to play. People are out there, men and women, and they're doing everything on their own. And there's nothing wrong with that. And we're just in that situation. And, and we get very independent, male and female. We've become very, very independent, right? And it's just a fact. We've had to. Women now work. They have careers. They're professional. And this has been going on for a long time. But they're also sometimes raising children and taking care of the house. They're doing everything. They're holding it all down. And men are working and, and if they've been single for a while and they're not living with their parents, they've been taking care of the house too. Now, when you couple up, when you get in a relationship, sometimes you forget what your role is. And we go into it thinking, I'm going to continue to do everything. And now I'm going to do it for this person also. And we need to look at, no, no, no. It's a 50-50 thing. This person, male or female, is coming in and they have a job. Their job is to be my partner. I'm, I'm not even joking about this. And we have to look at it this way. And you are not dating. You are interviewing them as a prospective candidate to be your partner. Now, when we put it in terms like that, when we use the word interview, we take some of the emotion out of it and we're not in that place where we're we're dating and we're hoping they pick us like we're on the an episode of The Bachelor, right? Because that's we're not doing The Bachelor in real life, okay? When we're interviewing a prospective partner, we've taken some of the, the emotion out, but what we've really done is we've taken out the pick me, pick me aspect of the relationship. And when we take that out and we look at them for who they are, what they're bringing to the table, and can they fulfill the job they are supposed to fulfill, we are going to look at them in a whole different way. Hey, I'm going to leave the show there for today. I'm really grateful for everybody who listened in, watched in, who joined in, called in. I look forward to Monday at noon. If you did not get through today, please call in on Monday. And until then... Everybody have an absolutely amazing weekend. Thank you.